Good evening. It's time for the visit with the, stra uh, with the person of high strangeness. In case you haven't noticed, we have been doing this for almost a year now. Um, actually, we have done this for a year. And I'm just all, always pleased how uh, you come in the house uh, during the heat of the summer and um, um, take a break from going to the mall in the winter time to come and spend this time with us all throughout the country in the different stations. Um, I get a lot of mail and uh, so today I wanted to share a little uh, thank you note with you that I have received uh, from Alaska. And it says, hi Lillian, I was listening to a tape while helping um, my husband in Kodiak. It was from September 98 and you told me not to forget myself and to make spirituality my number one priority. So I am. Thank you for reminding me. Love, Cindy. And as I was reading that, I realized that even though we do these uh, visits for all of you, um, they can get real personal, where right? it sounds like I'm talking to each and uh, one, every one of you. I asked my guest, Tammy Bauer, to come back um, to visit with us. Uh, you met her on a show. Uh, it was called Quick Trip to Colorado. And also, she is the, the clairvoyant, uh, the medium that went with us when we had the um, ghost investigation in Union, Oregon at Heart Lake. And um, since some of our inserted guests um, are from our Colorado trip today, it was only appropriate that I asked Tammy to come because she is the one that met both of the ladies. And so, hello Tammy, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Have a good trip over here? Yes, I did. It was pretty nice today. Cool. Um, this summer when we went to Colorado for a few days, we got to meet a lot of wonderful people. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. And uh, Electra. Mm -hmm. Electra, we is met she's her. going to be our second lady that and, we're playing. Uh, Eagle Woman. Mm -hmm. Now, she was a real wonderful person. She is. Very mm -hmm. elderly and just, elderly, excuse me, mm -hmm. and just continuing to do her work and um, then we know she goes to all over the world she does mm -hmm. traveling and, and doing what what she's supposed to be doing mm -hmm. she had a broken arm um, her name is Ada Eagle woman mm -hmm. the uh, she had a broken arm and she went right along just like it was nothing like it was nothing so when I fell on this show and um, broke my leg I said oh it's nothing and kept right on doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So without realizing it, she set a good example, you know. Yes, mm -hmm. she did. And I've shared, uh, I've shared with you that we have newborns that are star people in light workers. Uh, we've shown you teenagers, uh, younger people. So today the theme of the show is, uh, is um, ageless wisdom. And I want to share a little tidbit with you here. Um, Gypsy Hurley, my friend that I make reference to so often, mm -hmm. and you met on an etheric level. Yes. Um, the last Christmas that she was with us on this earth plane, um, her and I had, uh, we had been fussing, you know, we had been fighting, not physically fighting, but we had some disagreements. and. Um, first time in 15 years um, and mm -hmm. being a Scorpio I am um, I have a mind like a steel trap so when something isn't exactly you know correct to me mm -hmm. um, I have a way of carrying that with me for a long time and uh, so it was around Christmas when we had our disagreement and mm -hmm. I made it a point not to speak to her for several weeks now, what she did was she made this, this shirt that I'm wearing today. Uh, she made it for me anyway and sent it over for Christmas. And, of course, I didn't want to accept it, you know, because I'm mad, remember? Right. So my family said, you know, how about you accept it anyway? You might need it one day. And so today is the day. So I'm wearing the, the shirt that Gypsy made for me, even though we were fussing at each other. And then she passed in uh, that following May. So we never know when 
when we have our calling as light workers to exactly. go to another plane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess she knew more than she did than what we did. Mm -hmm. She knew you would need that shirt sometime. And mm -hmm. today is the day. Mm -hmm. And like yeah. I said, she was 62. Yeah, she kept right on with her work too mm -hmm. until she died. But yes, we do have infants that are born with mm -hmm. so much knowledge and um, as they get older, the knowledge starts to leave them a little bit more mm -hmm. than other knowledge picks up. Mm -hmm. And we have children um, that are just full of knowledge mm -hmm. and they just keep growing and growing and growing. Yeah, see, uh, we we shared, we did an indigo show um, mm -hmm. where, where we, do you remember Nick, the, the young man, yes, the handwriting expert? Yeah, yeah he, was he was one wonderful. of the young ones. Mm -hmm, he was. And um, ever once in a while, uh, I want to remind you that I am a psychic. Yes, and, um, and a good one. Thank you. Yeah, You're and uh, Tammy is a medium. Now, we don't always make a big thing out of that, but I do like to remind the friends that I am a psychic. And so what I found in my travels is that what some of you consider new age is really an old age. And it's been here for thousands of years and it is not a fad. Uh, mediums and spiritual wise women have been around mm -hmm. for thousands of years. And yeah. We go to Boeing's uh, to do psychic fairs. Yes, mm -hmm. and there was a lady there that I'm not sure about her age, but I'm going to mm -hmm. say she was close to 90. Yeah. And she was doing readings, and she had glitter uh, sparkles mm -hmm. all over her face. And um, the older she got, the more she got into doing more spirituality mm -hmm. things. And, well, yourself, for example, I'm not saying you're that, I'm you're that there. age, but you're I'm not a kid. There, yeah. But, I mean, mm -hmm. you continue with your path. and. Yeah. Um, help others every day mm -hmm. and, uh, and at, at one time some uh, some of the the older light workers sort of stayed in the background because it wasn't so in the open and not so acceptable yeah mm -hmm. it's getting more and more open, open. now mm -hmm. so people are coming out yeah and they've been there all this time now uh, and then we shared Kanashiba Shan you yes you familiar um, with her? Yes, I did mm -hmm. meet her on one occasion, and I did have a, a small reading from her, and I thought she was a wonderful person. Mm -hmm. And she's continuing with her work and helping others as well. She's been doing it for a long time, too, and I never did ask her age because she has such a wonderful way of just smiling at you, and, and just she, she smiles at you, and then you forgot what the original question yeah. was. So <laughs> that's how she sort of works around these things. Mm -hmm. But the, the ladies that uh, we're going to, that you're going to, meet today are somewhat different because they will tell you how old they are and they're very proud of this. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. And so uh, while we while we're going to set up for that first clip, um, we was in Hotchkiss, Colorado. Yes. And uh, at a convention to do workshops and readings. One of the ladies there, her name, she calls herself Arda, Eagle Woman. Eagle Woman. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't tell us how old she was and She's pretty much going to explain it in the clip, so maybe here. Yeah, uh, she shortly did mention. We, we'll go to the clip and let her tell her own story. Okay. Yeah. I was just going to say that she did mention that she felt she was the oldest soul at, at the convention we were at. 800 so. years, she said, mm -hmm. uh, in, on other planes, but on the exactly. Earth plane, she was up there. Uh, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to guess, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so any so anytime we're ready we can we can do that. I don't wanna put my head in here. There you go. And the friends they know me, so you know what I look like, so that's not an necessity. Oh, good morning, how are you? Well good morning, I'm wonderful. How about you? It's too early for me, so <laughs> and the friends know that I don't get up before noon and here it is nine o'clock Colorado time. That's not good. So I have no morning coffee. Oh. And you are? I am Arda, Golden Eagle Woman. Yes, and you caught my eye immediately as soon as I got here. It was one of those. Let me hug you. Yeah, so, yeah we had a, we had a, uh, a morning to uh, connect. Connect? <laughs> yeah, we did. Well, it was just wonderful. It's been pretty, it's been wonderful here. And today is our last day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, 
Why don't you tell the friends um, in Anchorage and Canyon and all around the world in Olympia what it is? Well, I want to do. say good morning and bless all of you. And, and I want to send you my love and light, and I know I receive it back. Mm -hmm. And uh, you want me to tell you I live at, uh, up in Cedar Edge, Colorado, which is just at the foot of the big Grand Mesa, mm -hmm. which is a flat top mountain of almost 11,000 feet with lakes and rivers and and streams and tall, tall pine trees and aspen and it is beautiful. Bear, we, we uh, bear went across, a bear cub went right across the road the other day when I was up there. Oh my, <laughs> yeah. I always wanted to go to Aspen, but... Uh, well, this Aspen is the other way. This is just right here at the Grand Mesa, which is just about, uh, well, I'm, my home is about 40 miles and it's about, uh, to the top, it's about another 12 or 15 miles from where I live. So you um, bowl down for the winter, I take it? Or what? You have to bowl down for the oh, winter? Oh, no. Well, we have very mild winters around here. We we get snow, mm -hmm. and it just leaves again. And uh, uh, in fact, I love snow, and I was a little disappointed when I moved there that it wasn't quite as much snow as I wanted. Oh, my, it's a show. We can't please everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I can always get all I need up there on that 11,000 foot uh, mountain. Yeah, yeah, up there on the Mesa. I hope my head is not in, in front of yours. What happened is we had a little accident with the camera yesterday. Uh, I had hidden it, tucked it away real snugly, and we have wonderful children here, and one of the wonderful children was piddling around and got behind the stairs, and bingo, <laughs> dad went. Wow. Yeah. So dear, what, you came to keep lectures and things? Uh, what was your subject? Well, my subject yesterday was uh, uh, soulmates, oh. uh, worthy opponents, mm -hmm. unconditional love and vibration, which all works together. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do awakenings. I'm an, an awakener, which is a wonderful spiritual, uh, uplifting, takes about three hours, and it takes you into uh, more of who you are and lifts off all the negative out out of you, assists you on the path. And it's a dance between you and your own soul, your higher soul, your soul. And I'm just a channel for that energy, so that you do. I call it the masters. I work with... Uh, you might have to speak a little louder. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll be happy to. Cool. I work with the uh, Lord Jesus, Archangel Michael, I channel both. And I uh, work with uh, the Council of Twelve, who also comes through. And um, then, of course, my whole soul self, or higher self, the seventh dimensional self, which is Miyamba. Uh -huh. And uh, Shalanda, Golden Eagle, is my soulmate on the other side. Uh -huh. That's where he's at. He's not here on planet Earth. Uh -huh. And I received my name, Golden Eagle Woman, a long time ago. That's my spiritual name. Uh -huh. And uh, then I take on the name of whatever given name I'm given here on Earth, and which is ARDA, A-R-D-A, this time. Mm -hmm. You were telling me yesterday you had many lifetimes here? Yes, I've been on this planet, uh, uh, lifetime after lifetime, uh, this about 835. I'm an old soul here on planet Earth. And uh, I, um, on the 17th of this month, which would be good for everybody to know, I uh, was uh, on oh, about 3 o'clock in this morning. I was awakened by uh, spirit and told to get up and write up, bring forth my old contract that I had made so eons ago of, of experiencing and learning through negative, negativity, mm -hmm. of uh, uh, working <coughs> with the dark so I could uh, become more of who I am. And so I did that. And I wrote that up, and uh, then they told me to declare it null and void because it no longer is for the new millennium. Mm -hmm. And so I did that and uh, released myself from my old contract that we all had made before we come down here. And then I uh, was told to write up a new one, and I did. Mm -hmm. And it was a very short, wonderful one. So like what we do in modern day, and uh, this is time for refinancing, huh? Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> and so what the uh, what the new contract is after I looked at that, the new contract for me is to be all of the light, all of the love, mm -hmm. all of the knowledge, all of the wisdom, all of the compassion, all of the joy, all of the ecstasy, wealth, happiness, health that I can be for the light and for my own transition. So how appropriate for you to have come to the Love and Light Conference. Oh, yes, yes. Well, I was helping Anne get it together. Oh, did you? Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we worked together quite often. It was so iffy uh, if yeah. I was even going to make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, it, uh, this was kind of iffy for her, too, because mm -hmm. uh, she wasn't sure just how she was doing it or where she was holding it or anything. She's doing a wonderful job. Uh, yeah. you know, yeah. Oh, yes, and, uh, uh, well, she was told to do it. Mm -hmm. and we have a, we have lots of Amish the people that are parked next to us since yesterday. When and what it is, eventually, um, I attempted to say hello and how are you. Yeah. It took a little while, yeah. but they're really talking now. And I, oh, that's that's good. Yeah, I, I don't have a background on on that, but I believe that this is really an accomplishment. You know? Oh, that is yeah. wonderful. Yeah, that's what I, I feel that that's what we're doing here. Uh, we need more light and more love here, yeah. so that was why she was told to do this. Yeah. And uh, that's why whoever was called to come here to assist needed to be here. Yeah, needed to be here because we are now being called to different areas mm -hmm. to expand the light. And uh, that is why we came here this lifetime to do this. We have learned, we have uh, experienced all the negativity and all the uh, so we could know what it was all about. Mm -hmm. And now it's time for us to become the light and spread the word and the love that we all are, because that's who we are, we are. Our total essence is a bank and we still love. That's where we came from. So, let's see, I'm supposed to ask someone, I'm not sure what it is. I just hope my head is not in this, in this picture here, but the best that we can do. Oh, I want to talk about your rocks. Oh, yes. The, the friends love to talk about rocks. Well, these here are crystals. It, and, oh. And this, and when I went to see the mirror in Germany uh, mm -hmm. last January. You hold it up like yeah, that. Sure. This, but I even, I, I don't have my camera for today. Uh, yeah. This, a, this is a, um, a, a Canadian. And there's quite a story behind this. I went mm -hmm. to Germany. Uh, I don't speak German, but I get by because there's so many angels around. Mm -hmm. And I went to Germany for my second uh, encounter with uh, Mother Mira, and uh, who is, uh, she is of the light, and she uh, does darshans, which is pulling the light through the body and up and out. Well, I uh, was at this, uh, it's right outside of Limburg, uh, Germany, is where she was located. So I went to uh, Limburg one day and went into a little um, crystal shop, crystal mm -hmm. rock shop, and um, with uh, two of the girls, they are from Germany, they spoke English, and uh, they took me in there and I started looking around and as they were making their purchases, I, I kept feeding this energy, but I couldn't find it. And his dog, which was, oh, she was so, um, she had the most beautiful eyes, and she would take me by my hand and move me around like she was trying to help me find it. She was the sweetest thing. And I would keep putting my hand over trying to feel the energy, and I would feel it, and then pick it up, but that wasn't it. I picked up a piece of terminal, that wasn't it. And I was just getting ready to leave, and the owner evidently didn't speak English, mm -hmm. but he was, um, um, but we had a heart connection, because he had looked at this crystal cross, and he came over, and he kind of took some things off of the felt was on it. And we just had a wonderful heart connection. Well, then he went ahead and waited on the others. And uh, just before we got ready to leave, he reached down and pulled this out and made it to me as a gift. There, yeah. And things come me too. Yeah. And we, we had discussed that on one of the previous shows, how uh, we did a... We did, did, we did a show called um, uh, Rocky Road. No, we don't mean ice cream. Mm -hmm. we, we talked about how we find rocks and 
what they mean to us, and sometimes we're just a vehicle to take them to the next part. Oh, yes, that's right, because, see, sometimes we are the cure taker. Crystals are entities of light and love. Yeah. All the crystals have love and light in them, and I use them all the time in my awakenings and my evenings. But uh, when, when he gave me this, we just hugged. I mean, we just wanted to share each other's image. And I didn't know what to say. I said, thank you. And I said, I love you. And in perfect English, mm -hmm. this man said, I love you too. Oh, my. And it was wonderful. And uh, I'll never forget him. He was such a wonderful being of life. And, uh, but yes, he said, uh, I use all these. This is a, I can't think what this is, but this is a wonderful healing. I like to use this on the sort of plexus. Mm -hmm. And it helps me pull out energies. And I have crystals, big, big, big crystals that I use. And uh, it is a wonderful, uh, they're wonderful friends. And I have the crystal cross here. But yeah, I had it in my head. Then. Yeah. yeah. Now, since my camera crew was here, they would zero in on all these things and make yeah. them big for our, our friends to look at it. But these are fine circumstances under which we are doing this. But as you know, um, if it isn't perfect, I'll show it to you anyway. Because, you know, we can never substitute the moment. That's right. And that's why I don't edit my show. And everything is perfect. It is. For the moment. For the moment. Yeah. Exactly. My son, he always taught me that. And uh, if maybe you'd like to have this story. Uh, Wonderful. Yes, do. See, he died. Can you speak up again? Okay. He died six years ago mm -hmm. in January. And I, he was having, he's a service mechanic, and he does all the, he did all the uh, jewelry uh -huh. and, and made handmade chains and everything. But he was going to a little, his uh, land, a little piece of land in uh, old, old Mexico, just on the uh, And uh, as he, uh, he went, and he knew he was himself. So he asked me to send him some money, so I sent him to a town right practically on the border. And, um, uh, just in general delivery. Well, he never made it. He died before he got the money. And it came back. The money came back. And I was, uh, you know, in my grief and everything. And I started to cry. And I said, I couldn't even do that much for you. And he was right there. He said, I said, I always called me little mommy. He says, uh, don't judge it, little mommy. It is perfect just the way it is. <laughs> Wonderful. And, but that's and, yeah, he stayed with me, uh, came to me many times mm -hmm. until uh, now he has now gone out. But he, uh, through my grief, he, was, he appeared many times to me. And it was wonderful because he was a uh, very, ma a very great master of his and his own right. Mm -hmm. He came down here to experience a negative side and he would experience and reflect it to me. But he's a wonderful uh, being. I saw him the last time I saw Jimmy. He was uh, he quite an outdoorsman. He liked the outdoors, and he was leaning against a wooden fence someplace in where he was. And uh, his uh, wavy uh, reddish brown hair was kind of waved in the wind, and he looked so light and so beautiful. He had shed all the earth uh, trauma. And he looks just beautiful. And that's the last I've seen her go. So I know he's gone on to whatever he needs to do. Um, speaking about perfect for the moment, uh, I've, I've worked on two uh, missing persons cases since I've been here. Oh. And uh, one of them was a little out of the ordinary. But we, we did manage to run into the spirit of that person, so that's been really great. We have children here. Um, beautiful handwriting expert that you're going to meet. His name is Nick. Oh, yes. Isn't he precious? Oh, he's, and he's also a healer because he was working on these. And he, yeah, on your arm, he told yes. me. He's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So we have a spread of workers, of light workers from 11. And there's a little baby that's doing something. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, that but little, little baby. baby oh, is awesome. Yes, that little baby is very, very rare. Very, very much of the light. I got, I got sugar uh, <laughs> from my donuts on my face. And then, and then, um, how old do you think the oldest light of four case that we have here? The who? The oldest. Of the children, or no, the oldest of the the people here, of the oldest speakers. Gee, 
I don't know. I probably am. I would think so. Yeah, I probably am. Uh -huh. But, you know, we're all becoming ages. Age has nothing Isn't to do with something? it. Isn't that something? We jump around here like... Yeah. You see, we're, we're no longer 50, 60, 70, 80. Mm -hmm. uh, we are ageless. And once we get that, there's no such thing as death. Mm -hmm. Death is only a transformation, another way of spirit looking at itself, of, of uh, creating another new area of life. We did a we did a show. It was called a Death in the Beginning, mm -hmm. and uh, we we covered that. So sort of friends are pretty familiar with some of the thoughts that we're trying to possess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all in all, it's been good. It's been wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, you see, that is it. As long as we never judge anything, that we love unconditionally. Only the judgment is what makes us not love unconditionally. And if we remove the judgment, we have then unconditioned love. And also, because you can't love and judge at the same time. The same time. There's no way. And also, you know, uh, uh, judgment creates karma. Remove the judgment, you have no karma. Yeah, and um, don't, don't feed the chaos. Oh no. no! If you if you uh, if you put energy towards that, it grows. You feed the dark, you feed the chaos. But if you uh, put light around it, and uh, we should whatever path it wishes to take, mm -hmm. that that will dissolve a lot of the uh, chaos. Many years ago, there was a um, a Star Trek episode. Something had invaded the ship. And uh, it, it was like, when you finally saw it, it was like an energy ball, an energy ball entity type thing. Uh -huh. And uh, it was making everybody angry and fight. I don't know if you remember that episode. And eventually they figured out that humor, love and humor, got rid of it. And they all started laughing and it just had no choice but the vicage. Yeah. Well, you know, that is one thing, laughter is one of the biggest healers, and also tears. Don't be afraid to cry. Because yeah. I found that if I let myself not, not stop the cry, but cry, then that certainly, sometimes that turns it to joy then. Mm -hmm. Joy and laughter and raises you. But if you try to uh, block mm -hmm. uh, tears or f those kinds of feelings, then you, uh, you don't rise above it. But the only way you can rise above it is to allow it to be, allow it with love to be whatever it is in the moment. And then you will rise above it because it no longer is there. Because uh, love, you know, is the ultimate tool that uh, will combat anything that is blocking your path to the light. For love is infinite. It can never be defeated. I don't think I can top that. <laughs> So I think what we're going to do is thank you so very much for well, taking this time early on a Sunday morning. It was my pleasure, Lillian. We've been trying to do that for three days, you know. Yeah, I know. But so, here we are, and I thank you so very much, and love and light to you, my uh, friend. And love and light to you on your path. I know that you are doing a wonderful job, and I think it's fantastic what you do. Thank you. Same thank to you. you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, and with that, um, hopefully my head is not in your view at all time, but as you know, like we said, whatever needs to be here needs to be here. You have a wonderful week. Yes. Yes, and that was perfect for the moment. You see? Mm -hmm. Um, because the reason I didn't have my hat on, you know, I wasn't, uh, I didn't want my hat, in, my head in there. But the whole thing is, I needed to be there today. Right. Cool. We learned a lot from her, didn't we? Yes. Mm -hmm. She was very knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. Then there were like four generations of Amish. Do you remember that? Yeah, they were all having a picnic, but they, they, uh, some of them had campers there mm -hmm. too, and um, we did have a one of them speak to us in the restroom. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, it took a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they came from but all over because all the license plates. And all the kids looked the same. Yeah, they did. <laughs> I remember remember that. that? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it was a real challenge. But even so, uh, even though we don't understand, uh, you know, mm -hmm. what their background was, they were all in unity. It's like they were all on the same sheet of music. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They are. Yes. Yeah. I'd like to comment on one thing that she said about when we die.
-hmm. She said there's no such thing as death. And that's true, being a medium <clears throat> that I am. The people that I call are not from up above in heaven, like some people think. They're in another dimension. Mm -hmm. And they're on the other side. Like when you hear people say, so-and-so is passed over. over that's yeah. why they say that. They're in another dimension. There's no such thing as time. We're just renting these bodies that we're, we're living in right at this time. But I wanted to comment on that. Well, maybe I should tell my little experience I had. Sure. Um, I've often in, in town at one of the local businesses I go to sometimes. And uh, there's very few things that sort of startle or rattle me a little bit. But anyway, on the wall, they had a dream catcher. And attached to the dream catcher was a medicine bag. So I said to him, you know, why is this medicine bag hanging by this dream catcher? And he said, well, oh, I don't know. I just hung it there. And I said, you know, if I'm going to buy the dream catcher and you hang that medicine bag there, that means I'm getting both for, the, for one price. So I was giving him, you know, kind of, I fussed with him about that. And so he said, you're right. So he took it off. and But the string at the end of the medicine bag was too short. So I said, where's the rest of it? And um, he didn't know what a medicine bag was. Mm -hmm. So I explained to him, you know, that's where you keep your, your aids and your, you know, the things that you need. Right. And I showed him that it, the string would have to come down where your heart is. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I know, uh, I, it's like I could feel myself going somewhere almost as if someone had given me a shot right before I go to surgery, you know. And I could see my body standing over here to the left of me. Mm -hmm. And somebody said, I don't know if it was this one or the one that I was in, but wherever I was, it had a brain. Because I said, <laughs> can you help me sit down? Because I had just fell a month early mm -hmm. and broke my leg, you know. And he did that. And uh, so he said, are you OK? And I said, no. I was a little bit beside myself. Yeah, it because sounds I was. like an out-of-body experience but what happened you know the body with the brain said can you help me sit down somebody said it because I remember thinking it. that mm -hmm. yeah. and so so this interdimensional thing here we experience in this more and more now mm -hmm. and, and and like I said I just told him he said are you fine and I said well I'm a little beside myself I have a prediction myself about about that and I'm gonna if I can, go ahead and say, right ahead. I think uh, 2051, I think, for those of us that are still going to be here, mm -hmm. I think that we're going to be able to do that, control it, when we can step in and out. I think we'll be able to do that quite often. I doubt if I'm going to be here, but if I don't get a handle on this, I'm going to have a <laughs> cast on every part of my body, so that's all I know. Yes. Um, now, I'm going to go on to, um, I, I'm going to set up and talk here for a minute before we go to our next clip. Now, Barbara McGuire and I did a show, and it is called, um, it was called Things That Make You Go, Hmm. Mm -hmm. And in there, we discussed a lady in her 80s. Her name is Electra Ann, and she's from North Carolina. Uh, we had done, uh, one of the guests canceled, you know, so we did a telephone interview with her. And by coincidence, here's that word, she's also Monica Ryan Smith, her, it's her aunt, by her, yeah, her, her aunt mm -hmm. by, by marriage. Um, and Monica is the, the wonderful person, you've met her on several occasions, and she imports the show to, um, to Channel 44 uh, in, up in Anchorage. Well, anyway. So we made the statement about Electra Ann at the time when Barbara and I did the show that she wasn't traveling anymore because of her age. And we were fine with that, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to go back to Colorado here. Yes. Electra is 82 years old. Mm -hmm. And she told, said to me directly, she said, I'm, I was old when I was 40. Mm -hmm. And... The opening shot, this woman just sent you this postcard That's right. from Australia, and she was hiking through this yeah. country, and uh, it, she's totally yeah. amazing. Yeah, so so we was at the, uh, see, I was giving a lecture at the um, Institute, 
UFO Institute of Colo in mm -hmm. yeah, UFO Institute of Colorado, mm -hmm. and this essence came up the driveway, and it felt so wonderful. And that was Electra. It was Electra, mm -hmm. and so we were lucky to interview her, and. Uh, I guess I'm going to let you listen to Electra, and then I'm going to elaborate on the opening shot after we listen to the clip. Okay. Cool, huh? That Wasn't she good. wonderful? Yes, she was. Yeah. So we'll we'll get that clip. Excited today because this okay. is uh, Electra. On oh, we talked about her on the show. Things that make you go hmm. She's the young lady that makes the wands and works with the good of the earth, and so since. You were so nice to come see me in, where am I? In Pueblo. 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 Colorado. Yeah, I'm gonna, here we go. I thought maybe there might be some things you would like to tell the friends. I would like to tell my friends that uh, I uh, was old a few years ago, but I got over it. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still, uh, Traveling. I do earth grid work, and it seems like most of it's done, as far as I know, but I still like to uh, go and meet the people. Mm -hmm. And I've always said people are my business, and I'd rather meet strangers than anything else, because I really do uh, enjoy uh, my work with people, as well as I do with the earth. Some of the friends don't know what grid work means. All right. There is, uh, in the earth, there is energy lines that has been termed ley lines, where the energy goes through the earth. It's always been that way. And a lot of people have not really and truly known the earth well enough to know that the earth is a living entity as well as we are. And uh, where the ley lines comes together, sometimes it's more than one or two. There is what we call a vortex, where the energy comes out of the earth. And uh, over the mistreatment of earth, as most people know that that's what we've done for eons of time with um, a lot of pollution and misguidance uh, and even miscreation. We plugged up the ley lines. So this, there is a number, a quite a number of um, people who do grid work. They travel to sacred places, and a lot of times places that are not so sacred, like New York City or Miami, Florida, or, or someplace on the, on the West Coast. And we do energy work. We have our guidance from above that uh, is aware of why we are uh, incarnated because, you know, we are God's hands. So they, uh, we are conduits to bring the energy through us from the higher levels. And uh, this is what we understand we can do, and we volunteer to go to those places and uh, go to the sacred sites. A lot of times we do ceremonies, and uh, sometimes I have as many as, as uh, 12 or 15 people that are interested in doing mm -hmm. the work that I do. And a lot of them are would-be ley line or grid workers, and they get an understanding of how it works. And I travel to different places and leave this information and uh, the um, energy that is given to me from on high through my uh, desires to clear these, I am able to share with other people the, that they, too, if they are so designed to do so. That is wonderful. I understand you're going on the road again. Yes, I have not been off the road. <laughs> That's true, isn't really? it? Yeah. Uh, this year I haven't been to any foreign countries, but I have traveled uh, in the United States and spent sometimes a month. I spent a month in Texas in June. Uh -huh. And from June I traveled to... Uh, uh, Roanoke, Virginia, in that area, and traveled quite a bit around there and uh, introduced a lot of people. And a lot of people knew what I was doing, and they mm -hmm. invited me to come. And uh, I spent 12 days there before I came home. And now I've been to Tucson, Arizona, and I met with uh, the World Congress of uh, 
the 13th anniversary of the harmonic conversions with over uh, 400 people from all over the world that was interested in the state of being that the earth is in now. And it would take quite a bit of time to, to go into that, but we are really, what I would like to say, there's been uh, another gateway open from the great central sun where the our whole God's creation has opened up a higher energy to come forth into the planet. And what has resulted from this, every human being on the planet has been, uh, I'll say, activated with a higher energy that's going to be able to help us all uh, bring in uh, to our consciousness a greater understanding of who we are and our purpose on the planet. And I feel real excited about being able to share this because this comes from uh, the seven solar crosses that most people are aware of that's taken place within the last uh, month. And on the 18th was the sixth, uh, the sixth solar flare that brought about this higher energy and the opening of the gates up into the great, great central sun beyond our central sun that we term as Helios and Vesta. I'm sure a lot of you who are listening to this is going to be able to tie in to the uh, uh, this information and already aware of a lot of what I'm talking about. And then you're going to Rio de Janeiro. I'm going to Rio de Janeiro the, the last day of September. And I will be attending a um, session where there will be many, many people attending. It'll be similar to the one I attended in Tucson, Arizona. I'll be going with the the group that's uh, Group Avatar. Uh -huh. And I uh, felt I didn't intend to go any place this soon, but when it was revealed to me that this was this was uh, another great uh, extension of what we did in uh, in uh, Tucson. I uh, thought about it and prayed about it, and my guidance was giving me an idea that I needed to go. So that very same night, uh, that was about the 17th, I think, I got up at 3 o'clock in the morning and started making my notes at how I need to proceed to go to this place and uh, to this gathering. Before I uh, even read the brochure, I knew that it was the mother the Mother Earth, the Goddess Energy that would be more uh, given or more information or more um, exchange. I had not read the uh, brochure, but I uh, immediately called the airport and got a reservation so that I could be sure and go in time. Now that's how most of us like to live our life, to follow our guidance. I'm starting to do a pretty good job. and. Um I hope I continue to do that. Now what you need to do is at another time, yes. when you when that thought hits you, you come to Olympia and come to the studio and then we will discuss the harmonic conversions in detail. Good. Good. And there'll be other things. I have been very active and there's one thing after another. And sometimes I didn't know I was going to a different uh, a different level of my mission until maybe the night before. Mm -hmm. Or someone would call and say, "Would you, uh, uh, would you uh, please pray for me? I'm having a lot of problems right now." And I would check with my guidance. Mm -hmm. And uh, Father, Mother, God, of course, is the very ultimate that I call. I call the Creator or the Builder of Form. And there's a lot of names for this, but I still call my Great Director God. That's one. So do I. Well, so do I call it the universe because God has three letters and universe has more. But we're talking about the same thing. Yes. And speaking of solar flares, it, the sun is really wicked in Colorado this year. It burns our yes. skin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thank you so very much and send you love, love, love. And uh, we hope to see you soon. And now we need to get out of the sun or yeah. else we're gonna... Well, I want to say one more thing. Oh, sure, go right ahead. Absolutely uh, very happy 
to meet with Lillian because she's been my friend for quite a while, but I never met her face to face. And I've had a lot of laughs by listening to the tapes and uh, her programs, and I think she's a highly interesting woman. And I thank you, and I recognized you coming up the stairs. For Did some you? reason, I know who you were. Okay, and I thank you until the next time when you come into the studio. And yeah, I want to give my unconditional love to each and every person because people are my business. And uh, I love you whether I've ever seen you in life. Yeah, and I'll vouch for that. Okay, thank you very much. Well, thank you. I thought I was closing off a few minutes ago, but I'm so verbal and I wanted to get it all told and I forgot probably the most important thing is that I do in, uh, or that we do, because I've had other friends that goes with me, we do a tone that uh, it's a medium to bring forth the higher energy into the earth to clear the ley lines and the vortexes. So I just wanted to let you know, and the medium of that that I use in the form of sound is... the earth and this one is for the higher this brings the kingdom of heaven to earth and into the very center of the earth I extended my tone We'll make sure we put that in the middle. Thank and you. again, I thank you and I love you. Isn't that awesome? Yes, she's really something. She was really, really something. And here we had told everybody she, she was too old to travel, you know, <laughs> so we really feel kind of bad about it. And you know, the other thing that um, was of interest to me is they did not know each other. I mean, you know. But they right. were basically, uh, they made reference to the same dates, mm -hmm. to the same events. And it's like people just know, Yeah. you know. Now, uh, you, you had started to tell us, uh, or maybe you did, about the opening shot. Now, that was, a, Electro Aunt sent me that. And um, it is a mountain range in central Australia. Mm -hmm. After she came back from Rio de Janeiro, she up and went to... Oh, Australia. to Australia. Mm -hmm. And she said they had a wonderful time. They were walking, hiking a lot. They slept in tents. My goodness. And I don't know what to say about that because <laughs> uh, I, w I would probably physically have a hard time with that now. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, if she could do it, we could do it. <laughs> that's, that's a good, I that's, that's really good point. She's yeah. a regular gad about, I guess, but mm -hmm. she's doing what she loves to do. Yeah. So these are actually, I think, the oldest friends uh, on this plane yes. uh, that I can think of that we have. Um, and they still travel and they give their talks and their speeches and advice, give advice. Mm -hmm. and um, They're just, they just love everybody and um, they try to do their their work amongst the universe mm -hmm. and, and to help pitch in as one of billion to save the earth things. This has been really a really positive show now. I just had a thought and I am gonna uh, verbalize this. Yeah. It's like most of the in indigenous people, mm -hmm. they keep their elderly, the, the old people at home. Yeah. Because their work is never really done, you know. they. They teach you and they teach you until they can't go any further. So, but unfortunately, we live in a society when a person gets a certain age, whether they want to or not, we stuff them away in a nursing home. And that is just horrible. It is. I agree with you. I don't, uh, they can't grow. They can't expand. Nothing. They can't teach the kids. They can't do anything. So I believe we really cheat as a whole. We cheat ourselves out of all that wisdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, yes, after working in a nursing home for a short time. Mm -hmm. Those people have a lot to offer, just sitting around listening to the, mm -hmm. the stories they could tell you. They have so much knowledge that, you know, we'll never have till we reach that age. Um, that's really something. When I was a child, I felt I needed to go to Madagascar, you know. And every time I think about it, it fills me with sadness. Uh, hmm. Somewhere inside there, I can't identify, but somewhere inside, I have this need to go to Madagascar. And then uh, a while back, someone gave me a stone. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it was a ball about this big around. And uh, it is a stone native to Madagascar. I'll be done. Mm -hmm. And that sort of took the edge off a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't feel that I needed to, you know, go, go. that bad. Mm -hmm. And then bet, uh, between Marla Morgan, that I have a real connection to her sister. Mm -hmm. Marla Morgan is the author that wrote um, Mutant Message Down Under. And then, of course, Electra going mm -hmm. to Australia verbally, I mean physically. So, mm -hmm. and by verbalizing some of the things that she experienced, I did feel I was sort of going along, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I know Electra did say that a lot of times she doesn't have the money to go or she doesn't know mm -hmm. she's going until the night before and she's told by her guides that she's going she goes and things are provided for her that she needs uh, I'm glad you brought that up because that's really how it works most of the time um, you know we don't uh, some of us have a little income and some mm. of us have a little income, <laughs> a littler <laughs> income, you know. Yeah. But for some reason, you know, if mm -hmm. like Eilis, she goes out and researches the crop circles, it's always um, the friends and and people that that read what we write, or and sometimes just out of the blue they send us uh, something, and it's always right. that something that's just what you need to, to do continue. what you need to do. Yes. And, and we get kind of stressed out when we can't meet our expenses, but it always it's always works. It always comes through mm -hmm. at the last minute. Um, I'd like to share um, a little story on that matter. Um, the last show that we did together, I had that green ball. Do you remember that? The Colorado show, yes. That, mm -hmm. that represents the the earth and this mm -hmm. the other. It's the universe to me. Yeah. Um, that ball was thirty-five dollars. Mm -hmm. It's not crystal; it's glass, and I needed that ball. Mm -hmm. And I had thirty-five dollars, and um, I was either to eat or to buy the ball mm -hmm. to finish getting home. And you said to me, "Why don't you buy the ball if you need it, and you'll get the money back?" Well, I did get it back yeah. a couple of days later, but I got thirty-five dollars back, so it worked out that way. You know, you do get what you need. It always comes through. It comes through, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and then just like she said, she made, uh, she was told to go there. She didn't even read the brochure. She up made the reservations, you know. Yeah. And that's a level of trust that all of us would like to achieve. Oh, yeah. You know, if we could. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty good, I, and I'm kind of getting there, but it, it's, it really is a little... Uh, scary sometimes yeah you know mm -hmm. and I've sh shared sometimes. stories about things that you know appear just appear out of nowhere sometimes just to service stations and kiwis and those other yeah. stories of friends are familiar with but in a three-dimensional really hectic world that we live in right now mm -hmm. uh, but imagine to be well twice your age at least and and yeah. to go with the flow like that. And the, and the other thing that um, Ada, I want to correct that, that she, I called her Eagle Woman. Her name is Ada Golden Eagle Woman. I need to correct mm -hmm. that. Uh, it, then for her son to, after his passing, tell her everything is perfect for the moment. Yes, that is really neat. That takes care of stress. You know, if that's yes. how it is, there is nothing to get stressed out about. No, there really isn't. Um, people are really 
concerned about dying, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they really don't need to because we don't, there's no such thing as dying. You mm -hmm. just go to the next, next dimension and you're still there. And, and they talked, they made reference to humor, Aga did. Um, and uh, I'm happy to let you know that uh, we have lined up a comedian uh, that we're going to do one of the shows. It's going to be oh prescription <laughs> laughter. Mm -hmm. oh, that'll and, be a good one. And so the, the guests just keep falling out of the sky, so to speak, and sometimes they really do. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a, you had your first UFO encounter yes. on that trip. and Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. And I've seen nonstop seen him ever since. Nonstop, that's right. <laughs> that's yeah. for sure. I think they live over St. Martin's College in the last few weeks. But <laughs> yeah. just, just you know, keep your sense of humor and trust. And like when I when I shared with you that I was a little startled mm -hmm. uh, when I stepped beside myself, that was new for me. Yeah. And so it can get a little spooky sometimes, you know. I'd like to share this one. Uh, this one crystal here, um, when we were on our trip, back to that trip in Colorado. Oh, the rock shop, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I got this, and this is called a uh, pink rose quartz, and I just thought it was so pretty. And Colorado is the only state that this grows in. Mm -hmm. It's the only place you could get it, so I just wanted to share that with, with our friends today. Yeah, and like Ada, she goes all the way to, to Germany somewhere. And, and, f and found her crystal. And they, the ladies there were both so delightful, and so was you. You was a wonderful guest. Um, come see us again next week, and we will continue doing this for as long as you like. Uh, you have a wonderful week. Um, take care, and uh, well, you have a safe trip home. Thank you, Lillian. Okay, bye. bye.